Uh, greetings, everyone, and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Sequoia, uh, integrative psychiatric facility, a holistic facility where we treat people, we do not treat diagnoses. And every week we try to present something of interest to most everyone, perhaps something that you can use in your life. I'm Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist at Sequoia, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... I am Vivek Mendapra and I am a medical school graduate from India and I am a student here. And on my right? I'm Becca Lavelli, I'm a PA student um, from Seton Hill University. Yes, and today we're, uh, we have the great uh, privilege of being joined by our dear friend uh, Janelle Burdell, who's on the staff here at Seclair, uh, providing some energy and different types of ways that uh, we deal with uh, different types of disorders by music and in uh, in Janelle's case, uh, drumming. Could you tell us, give, tell us just a little bit about yourself, Janelle? Uh, well, sure. Hi. Nice to hear from everybody out there. It's nice to be here. Uh, my name is Janelle Burdell, and I'm a drummer by profession. I've played the drum set and other percussion instruments professionally all of my life. And it was along uh, the journey there that... Um, not only did I realize that it benefited me in, in many ways in my own psychology and keeping myself mentally healthy, but actually there has been a lot of research along these lines. I was fortunate to be a part of that when I was working with Mickey Hart, The Grateful Dead. He was very involved in, in getting involved behind that research with Remo, Health Rhythms, of course. And now there's a ton of great information about why playing music in recreational atmospheres and together with other people benefits us both mentally physically and spiritually so it's been a great pleasure being able to bring my version of that my rhythm ga rhythm games is my business or uh, project around rhythm and healing and being invited up to St. Clair where we've had great results with it i would say could you tell us a little bit how you became interested in music and drumming in particular? Yeah, um, that I don't know. You know, it was always something when I heard it on recordings. I just gravitated with music, of course, but especially to drumming. It seemed like everything was built on that, that that was the backbone of whatever style of music. So I definitely had an affinity towards it. I did not go around hitting cuts and bands like so many children did, um, I kind of knew I was going to make records, and I, I was very focused about that and thought drumming was something I could do. So it's the first chance I could, I, I uh, signed up in a school program, public school program, and got involved. I see. And uh, before I forget, I wanted to let you know, over the weekend I got a chance to see uh, Grand Funk Railroad, and uh, oh. their, their drummer's uh, unbelievable. Great guy, I don't know whether, I forget his name actually, but he was a wonderful person. So tell me about your uh, your project, Let the Spirit Play. I'm interested in that. Yeah, Let the Spirit Play is the first of my many releases uh, that feature the Udu drum. The Udu drum is a clay from, the, from, I'm sorry, a clay drum from Nigeria, traditionally played by women. And it's an amazing sound, much the opposite feeling then the drum set, which my primary instrument happens to be the biggest of the drum sounds, the drum set and the big drums. So to go to uh, explore the Udu drum invites us into a different place because it's actually a very small and quiet sound so coming from a drum, one that brings you more to it rather than bringing the sound to you, like most drums. So it's been an interesting project. I've been exploring it for, gosh, the past 15 years now of my career in life. And I, this is the first of the releases. Let the Spirit Play is a uh, single download series where um, each one is designed to allow the listener the chance to change the channel of their mind really quickly. It's such a unique sound, and these pieces are defined such that you're able to really let go and get into this sound in a way that gives you a new vantage point. Uh, I've been trying to explain to the students here, uh, and, and uh, words don't do you justice, 
on the the type of groups that you do here with us the uh, the drumming circle group that the process group that that you do have and the type of energy and i'm particularly impressed with uh individuals who are perhaps a bit reticent or who don't want to really get involved then but i've seen by the time the end the group ends that they're they're pounding those drums as hard as anybody else and I've seen also, uh, Janelle, and I'm sure that you've noticed this, that I know seen some of your uh, ways that you push things kind of go toward the feminine nature. And I particularly noticed that it's the women who particularly connect with the drums and with you. Yeah, there's an empowering factor there that's undescribable. Um, you know, I talked about it a little bit in the interview that Reach B, you just did with, with me in the Pittsburgh Trib, which is great. But somehow women, you know, it, it's the old status story or status quo story about the way that we've placed or women have been postured or the way they've postured themselves, not just in relationship to men, but in the relationship to themselves. And I think that by giving women, especially all people, the drum, you give them a tool, a magic tool that they can now use to follow the thread of their own life, is what I like to say, and, and follow the thread and unravel it and demystify it and ener re-energize it in new directions, which I think is the kind of change we're all hoping to make, really fundamental change, you know? And I found that drumming, not only for me, and traditionally throughout history, um, has been used for this uh, one purpose. So, again, being able to bring it into Sinclair's processing group up there has been uh, really great for me and great joy. And I'm so glad that so many people are finding some joy in their life where they've just come in, you know, struggling finding that and I'm glad that music has given that back. Well what we do here as you well know Janelle is we ask people to allow us to help them help themselves and number one usually that's starting a relationship with someone who perhaps they're not real familiar with and that's themselves yeah. uh, and unfortunately given uh, the dynamics of society where male dominated it's particular that uh, women and particularly I find that the young women uh, Janelle benefit by you could you share a little bit about that yeah again you know I've worked with all many 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 women from very young I work with a preteen teen rock and roll camp for girls and again and again we see this happening even at the small youngest level um, a woman, just how they're being told not to be, not to be big, not to be, take up space, not to find their voice, basically. So it starts very, very early on. And the way that culture our society is at the moment just continues to culture and refine that. And so, you know, as far as the younger women grabbing onto that, well, what could be more fun than drumming, right? I mean, I can't wait to get up there and give this to the students and the teachers and, and doctors up there because I don't think there's anything more fun than getting out your frustration in a creative way, you know, than drumming. And, and it's very hip and now and, and relates to the music that they're listening to, which rap and, and all of modern music at the center of it are the drums. So I think that all those ties just, resonate with the younger people and again i can't stress this enough which is what i love about Sinclair. like you said helping people to help them themselves with the work i do i don't have to tell you what to think or dream or want for yourself i know you'll be able to figure that out as you drum and continue to drum and continue to tap the divine life force within you and bring it forth into your daily life i know that with all of my being from living it myself. Well, I know that you're familiar with uh, Jim Donovan, who's now the uh, professor at St. Francis University, and our discussion centered around a lot of, of course, of what we're talking about, and a lot of it's centered around the vibration aspect to music, and how that and how that touches people, the vibration, the actual sound vibration. Could you speak a little bit about that, Janelle? Sure. One of the great things I learned while working on Planet Drum, which was a pet project, of, a solo project, I should say, of 
Mickey Hart's um, a grand solo project, which united master drummers from around the world. And one of the things I was always amazed is beyond language, they came together and, and truly played music, but, <clears throat> excuse me, they came together and talked about, spoke about life, and they often spoke about it in rhythmic and vibrational terms. Um, in fact, they insisted, you know, we are rhythm beings, we are live in a rhythm world, we're vibrational beings, we live in a vibrational world, and and what's the buzz, and lots of different films have started to approach this idea um, that we know now is true with physics, that we are just these electric charges hitting together in certain patterns to create solids or liquids or whatever. I mean, I surely am not showing the whole idea, but but there is a common thread there that we are a vibrational world, that it is a vibrational world, and we are vibrational beings. And, I think that medicine is going to move forward as we, by leaps and bounds, once we start addressing things on those terms. Uh, Becca, any uh, thoughts or questions for Janelle? I uh, sincerely hope you can meet her. I was just wondering if you had any like specific patients that um, it really helped. Really helped specifically? Well, you, you know, in each instance, help is relative, right? Mm -hmm. Hi, by the way. I look forward to meeting you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I'm sorry we can't see each other today. I would love to see you. So, um, But help is relative, right? So when a mother came to me with a six-year-old autistic boy and said, you know, I'm really struggling. He's hitting me and he's hitting his sister. One of the first things I developed was what's now Micah's mantra, which is, you know, there's, there's nobody likes to be hit. The drum is the number one Thing, the only thing that likes to get hit in the world. Your mom doesn't like to get hit, your cat, your dog, you know, your sister, your brother, you don't like to get hit. But the drum, it sings when you hit it. So to have a mother come back after that lesson of teaching, working with this boy, and have her in tears, crying because, you know, he, ha he wasn't hitting anymore. And he was walking around the house saying, big drum, big love. Mm -hmm. You know, it, that helps. You know, I think yeah. um, it's hard to define it because everybody wants to define it, quantize it, and feed it back to the masses, as you guys know. Um, but I think that it, that's also part of medicine is getting more individual with everything, down to dosages and, and approaches, and it might be very unique for every single person. I think that's the challenge. Um, I know up at Seclair, many of the doctors have shared with me, besides many of the clients after each session have shared with me that it's really made a significant difference in their life or saved their life. I've had teens come up to me and say that to me. A lot of times they won't say it very loud. They'll pull me aside because it means that much to them, yet they don't really know where to gain the support for that. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Yeah. Answer? Yeah, thank you. Vivek, yeah, I think uh, that you guys are really the leaders, the PA, so I love, love, love getting feedback from you as well because you're faced with all this before you in a world that wants to quantify and quantize and declare very clearly is about an individual program. Mm -hmm. And I, that's why one of the things I really love about the people up there. Yeah, thank you. Vivek, any uh, thoughts for Janelle? Yeah. Uh, can you please tell us uh, how the music uh, help us in to cope, up, uh, cope with our stress in our life? His uh, question was how the, the, the music can cope, help us cope with the stress in our lives. Uh, remember, these people are Vivek's uh, uh, a medical graduate. He's attempting to get into a residency. He's doing a whole lot of studying. Mm -hmm. uh, the young ladies here, the PA students that we have, are uh, in a torturous program uh, that that if they that if they stand at the end they win, uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a stress filled life. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't it? It's true. Even as Doc reminds us in the processing circle, even good things happening to you can be stressful. So life is full of stress. It really is about managing it. And um, I can't see life without music. Um, when there has been life without music, it's surely been a lot less colorful for me. Um, I try to remember 
and remind people to even use the radio and how quickly just listening to a song if you're in traffic could ease your mind or take away that edge or just how quickly it can happen. So when we bring in another vibration into our vibrational world and our sphere, that resonates differently, so we start to resonate differently. Remember, that's what it really is, right? <laughs> so it's science here. Um, Doc, I say music, 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 more music. <laughs> no more music for the world right now. We're so frustrated. We're all living in a very playing a very difficult board game, I'd like to say. We're all living up to our necks. They've got us living and spending as much as we can spend, more than we'll ever make, you know, and and so it goes. So how do you continue to manage that? Um, surely music has to be the daily dose that we can all give ourselves and give it to ourselves. Permission to give it to ourselves. Well, there are many layers uh, to your onion, Janelle, and one of them that I was unaware of was uh, your interest in sound design. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I love, love, love electronics. People say, oh, electronic music is replacing whatever. Yes, it is. And, you know, many things replace the steel meals. I'm from Braddock, North Braddock, so I've seen. How, you know, when industry changes and, and evolves, how things change and destroy and rebuild birth and death, that rhythmic cycle of life that we have um, is constantly at play, you know. Um, now, I, as to electronics, it's very interesting. I really love electronics, but I see us all relying on what they give us as the electronics, and I like to, again, make the electronic sound. So I like to use the recording process, which I've become very blessed to be a part of so many great recording projects, to use the actual technology that there is to create new sounds. And I am also very interested in how those sounds can and will be used in healing and have experimented with that myself, even just working with, uh, like I said, the young autistic boy and a few other people who were bordered uh, on the spectrum, Asperger's spe spectrum somewhere, where sound was very important to them, but a controlled sound was very important to them. So that brought in the element of, instead of using live drums, that maybe I could use electronic drums. So I see anything as the medium. Remember, the benefit of drumming comes from the core motion of the bilateral motion. If you saw me right now, I'd be swinging my arms like the Italian that I am. You know, drumming in the air, because it's that bilateral motion that connects to crawling and connects to so many ways that we form our neurological self and can change our neurological self. So we want to keep people doing that motion for sure. Even Jim... Donovan talked about it in his technique, um, you know, tap, um, his whole technique about using the bilateral motion. That is the motion that wins and what causes all the many benefits of your immune system being boosted, your killer cells being boosted, and onward now they've proven down to your DNA, 16 of 45 receptors of how you deal with stress and anxiety are actually reversed. So this kind of research has already been proved and connected to this bilateral emotion. So we surely want to keep get people playing together. Um, it's hard to say if there's a specific rhythm or tempo or time. I think that really varies for different people as to what's going to benefit them. But we know that doing this motion together with people making music really is a great, great benefit. I say listen to it as much as possible as well. And with the electronics, it just gives us a more controlled way to um, use sound. Well, my hope is, Janelle, that uh, soon uh, you will be able to have you in here live. I'd love uh, for everyone to see and hear you play an udu drum, which uh, I found yeah. absolutely fascinating. Uh, and just uh, just your, your presence, your, your infectious energy, the way that you can fill a room is uh, is truly amazing so as at the end of every uh, podcast you know we give a, a free prescription which is fruits nuts and vegetables unplug your television and take up fishing and for a truly mindful experience 
we ask people to fish without bait, live a life without uh, specific expectations, kind of like an endless uh, drum circle. Absolutely. Love it. <laughs> sure. And, Love as you, it. and as usual, our assignment and your assignment is to do something nice for yourself today to be nice to yourself today and perhaps to share the kindness that you give to yourself with, with another. And I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Vivek uh, to let people how to let them know how they could contact us with any questions, comments, concerns, criticism. All are, all are welcome. To continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter under Ciclar Life. You can also find um, these and other Grand Round on youtube.com slash videos. And uh, find audio version on iTunes uh, speakers and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our uh, on our great blog. Thank, thank you. you, thank you so much. And until the next time, uh, we hope to see you all again. Janelle, thank you so much for joining us today, along with uh, my co-hosts Becca and Vivek. Until then, I'm Jim Ellermeyer. <laughs>